The Cube presents On the Ground. Hello and welcome. I'm Peter Burris with SiliconANGLE Media, Wikibon, and we're here today doing an on the ground, very important on the ground, at Oracle's headquarters. This segment we're talking to Bhagat Nanani, who is the Group Vice President of Product Development in Oracle's IoT organization. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Peter. Now we've got a lot to talk about mm -hmm. because IoT is obviously at the forefront of many people's minds. It's mm -hmm. one of the major initiatives happening in business, although a lot of business people tell us that when somebody starts throwing IoT concepts at mm -hmm. them, they're not quite sure exactly what the parameters or what it means. Mm -hmm. So let's start here. A lot of hype about IoT. What does it mean to Oracle and Oracle's customers? Yes, so there is definitely a lot of buzz about IoT and it is affecting a lot of industries, whether it be manufacturing, transportation, um, uh, home automation, uh, fleet management. And uh, we expect around 50 billion devices to be connected in the next two to three years. And even the devices already connected today are generating over five zettabytes of data. And very little of that is actually- A Zettabytes. Data. Exactly. So zettabytes it's, is megabytes, it's, gigabytes, it's, terabytes. Exabytes and, and then zettabytes. A lot of data. A lot of data. And very little of that is being actually used. And uh, if you look, talk to any analysts, it's, they project somewhere between a one to five trillion dollar market, right? But you know, numbers aside, there is real business value here. I mean, some companies are looking at IoT to improve operational efficiencies. Um, others want to use IoT to improve the customer experience or create sort of new business models and new revenue streams. So there are clear opportunities here and that's what's attracting a lot of these organizations to, to IoT. Now, as a company tries to do something as complex as introduce a new business mm -hmm. model, they're going to mm -hmm. need a lot of new technology mm -hmm. as well as a lot of new good ideas. Mm -hmm. So what is Oracle's approach to mm -hmm. engaging customers in this marketplace? So if many of our customers are going through these digital transformation or industry 4.0 initiatives, if you will, and there are some common patterns emerging when it comes to IoT, things like machine safety, product, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, production reliability, uh, worker productivity, uh, supply chain optimization, and all of these uh, need extensions to existing applications or new types of applications. So Oracle's approach to IoT is to provide IoT enabled smart applications for things like manufacturing, fleet management, asset monitoring, uh, equipment prognostics, things like that. But that's much more than Oracle's currently providing right now. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about how this IoT ecosystem, which mm -hmm. is very broad, very complex, mm -hmm. touches a lot of different parts of mm -hmm. business, is embracing Oracle and how Oracle's trying to set up this appropriate partnerships mm -hmm. so that customers can in fact get a complete solution. Sure, so if you look at companies embarking on the journey to IoT, we see them go through sort of multiple phases. They start with just connecting their assets. You know, So they have assets sitting um, um, uh, on the field, not connected to the business systems. They start connecting them so that they can get real-time visibility into the assets and they can react more quickly to any problems that occur. So now they've reduced the time to react to any issues. That gives them sort of immediate ROI, but soon after they want to move to more of a proactive monitoring. So they're collecting information from all these uh, assets and they want to do predictive analytics and reduce unplanned downtime and predict failures before they actually happen. Once they do that, then they want to transition to using IoT data into their core business processes, whether it be back office uh, supply chain processes, ERP uh, processes, or customer facing processes like CRM, where they start to use IoT data to provide differentiated experiences. And the IoT offerings that we provide essentially help them go through this journey from connected assets all the way to service excellence. So when we're talking about connected assets, we're mm -hmm. talking about the machinery mm -hmm. as well as the other resources, at least uh, that, are, that are either handling or running operations, but also handling customer engagement. Mm -hmm. Now this suggests that there's going to be an intimate relationship between the technologies that are collecting all this data, sensing mm -hmm. all this data, mm -hmm. transmitting all this data, mm -hmm. and the systems that are actually responsible for turning these feeds mm -hmm. into something that is recognizable by the business mm -hmm. as capable of generating a decision. Mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about the relationship as you see it between IoT and big data. Okay. So recently we released um, an IoT cloud service and uh, the Main difference in our approach to IoT versus many of the other vendors is we look at it from the applications out, as you said, from the business out, right? We want to 
take the insights from these devices, the data coming, and make that actionable within your enterprise business processes, right? So the goal of IoT Cloud Service is to actually bridge this gap between the operational technology and the IT world. And we do this by providing out-of-the-box applications as well as platform components. I talked about applications like asset monitoring earlier. So there we have uh, uh, out-of-the-box app that helps you answer questions like, how are my assets being used? What is their health? Do they need to be serviced? You look at equipment monitoring, it's about how are my systems doing on the factory floor? Collect data from them constantly so that I can decide which ones to service in the next maintenance window, right? Now, I'm collecting all this data. This has to be backed by sort of platform components. And our platform components fall in sort of these three broad categories, right? Connect, analyze, integrate. So the connect part is where you bring the device, onboard the devices, mm -hmm. and provide bi-directional connectivity to them. So we have this concept called device virtualization, which really simplifies how you interact with these devices and provides a software representation of those devices in the cloud. So now any application interacting with it doesn't need to know the gateways and the protocols that are used. On the analyze side, there are two types of analysis. There's real-time analysis, which is done on the event stream. And then there's big data analysis that's done where you combine the real-time stream along with contextual data setting in your data lakes or your ERP systems, and then you apply predictive algorithms on top of it. We have a bunch of capabilities here. We provide business user-friendly interfaces to model these event processing functions, and we also provide built-in algorithms using the, our big data uh, services for things like equipment efficiency, remaining useful life, things like that, right? So big data and IoT are quite related. If you look at uh, the, the, the big data techniques like Spark, Hadoop, or some of these services, the type of data, data they operate on data with high velocity, high volume, high variety. IoT data has all of the same characteristics of, uh, mm -hmm. of that big data, right? Now, once you have analyzed this data, you also want to integrate it with your backend systems, and that's where we provide out-of-the-box connectivity with our SaaS apps, as well as our e-business suite and our JD Edwards applications, which are commonly used by our enterprise customers. You have the connectivity piece, you have the analytics, and you have the integration. You use these capabilities along with some of our other PaaS services like our business intelligence cloud service or our mobile cloud service to build your um, IoT uh, application. So you mentioned that these tools are easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned uh, the distinction between IT and OT. Mm -hmm. uh, this combination of IoT mm -hmm. and big data analytics is touching a lot of different parts of the business. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to talk to operational technology mm -hmm. people, IT people, exactly. you have to be able to talk to developers, you have to be increasingly be able to talk to business people. Exactly. Historically, this all comes together when developers are engaged to mm -hmm. create value mm -hmm. out of all these piece parts. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how Oracle is bringing greater support to that developer community mm -hmm. to bring this all together and turn it into value for a corporation. Sure. So let's let's take an example here, right? Let's take the manufacturing example, and then you know I'll talk about the manufacturing, and then talk about some of the challenges there and how we enable that, um, you know, for the developer community. Community in manufacturing world, when you're doing these IoT kind of solutions, there's a common uh, analysis done called the five M analysis: man, machine, method, material, measurements. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at man, uh, method, materials. All of this information is sitting in your ERP system or your databases where you have who operated on the system, what training did they receive, what techniques did they use, what raw material was used, what, who was the supplier. You look at machine and measurements, this is raw data coming from the equipment, uh, IoT data, and measurements is around the, the tests that were done on the system. You need to combine both of these to create a real predictive analytic solution for manufacturing, right? Now today, a lot of this has to be done using sophisticated sort of uh, data scientists and uh, you need sophisticated developers who can operate on these various big data components, whether it be Spark, Kafka, Cassandra, all of these. What we are doing at Oracle is trying to provide sort of tools and frameworks that abstract away some of that and are targeted towards the citizen developer or the business user. So you don't need to sophist have sophisticated data scientists, right? We have tools such as big data discovery, big data prep, uh, and uh, other tools such as uh, machine learning, which make it easy to build these kind of models. Now, if you are a developer who, want to, who wants to write all of this from scratch, even then, when you're dealing with different types of structured and unstructured stored, you need an abstraction layer that simplifies how you interact with this, how you query it, and so we are providing SQL-like interfaces that they're already familiar with. So whether it's a structured store or unstructured store, and whether it doesn't matter which 
native query interface it supports, you provide a standardized layer so that it, they can easily operate with the data. Now, even that takes a long time to build an IoT solution. So that's where the, our out-of-the-box applications come in. And by providing these out-of-the-box applications for specific use cases around asset monitoring, equipment prognostics, supply chain, we are really trying to reduce the time it takes for you to deploy an IoT solution. Because these applications already have those built-in algorithms. All you're doing is configuring them, providing some parameters, but you don't need to write the algorithm. You take your industrial gateways, connect the devices, and you're ready to go. So do you think that there's going to be new applications utilizing some of these new methods or models, or is it going to be just an extension of a lot of the traditional, more operational, financial-oriented applications that are already in place? It's a combination. So you know, when it comes to uh, uh, things like you know, existing maintenance applications or existing service applications, the interfaces of them used to be you know, manual, where someone will get a call and they will in enter an order into the system or a work order. With IoT, those are being extended to have new channels. So for example, in our service cloud, we have added a new channel with IoT, so now the d equipment itself reports the problem, and when the service technician gets a work order, they already know which part has gone bad. So the whole manual step is taken away. There are other areas where companies are trying to transition to this product as a service model, mm -hmm. right? And so those need new ways of monetizing, new types of applications where you're capturing utilization. There, there you will need some new applications. So it is a combination of the two. Now, you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier the 5M model. Uh, men, Machine. materials, machines, method. measurement, and method. Okay. Uh, I, I, just to, to give you, to date myself, I the first class on mm -hmm. technology I mm -hmm. took talked about the 4M plus I model. Yeah. It was men, materials, machines, money, okay. and information, mm -hmm. so didn't have method. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's come back to at least what we think at Wikibon, mm -hmm. SiliconANGLE, is still the most important piece, men or people, mm -hmm. the individuals. Mm -hmm. we're, talking about the, we're talking about IOT here, mm -hmm. but presumably we're going to also start bringing in those crucial interfaces mm -hmm. so that people become a more engaged feature mm -hmm. of how these loops are working between exactly. sensing mm -hmm. and analyzing mm -hmm. and creating models and then enacting something in the marketplace. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about how Oracle sees the role that people are going to play mm -hmm. in these transitions that we're talking about. So, you know, if you look at the, the service industry, if you will, right, I mean, this is, I gave you the example of automatically creating a work order, but with IoT enabled devices, it is transitioning to more of a self service model or an assisted service model, where now people have much more information uh, available to them at their fingertips when they are actually looking at problems, whether it be some part that has failed or a customer just reported an issue. Now you can interact with these devices remotely, and so now you have significantly reduced the time to actually act on any problems and overall improve the customer experience, right? There is the people part in sort of creating those models and providing sort of information to enrich those models because you know a data scientist can get all the information from the devices and create the models, but you also need the experts who know you know how these systems are supposed to behave, how they were designed, how they behave under certain environment conditions. You take that into account along with the real data that you're getting, and that's where you can predict how this particular equipment will behave in the field, right? So Oracle mm -hmm. Open World is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. One quick idea, what are you looking for from an Oracle IoT perspective? From an Oracle IoT perspective, uh, one of the things we were really looking forward to is the applications that you know we are launching, as well as many other applications within Oracle who have now embedded IoT within their offerings so to make those applications smarter. And you'll hear a lot about that at Open World. And that is one of the key tests of adoption, exactly. is how fast that happens. Exactly. Uh, Bhagat Nanani, thank you very much for being here, Group Vice President or IoT Product Development at Oracle. Uh, again, Peter Burris from theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter.